Hi everyone, Kate here. We in the Northern Hemisphere are fully in the depths of winter at the moment and oh golly are my hands in rough shape. The furnace humidifier in my house is broken at the moment, so between that and just the cold weather in general, my skin is much more parched than it normally is. I've even managed to split one of my nails, which never happens to me. Looking for some relief for the situation at hand, pun completely intended, I thought it would be a great time to learn a bit about how women during the early part of the 20th century protected their hands during the colder months. I'm going to be specifically focusing on the late 19th century and the early part of the 20th century. The most obvious way to protect the hands was through the use of gloves but women also had many preparations and treatments that they could use in addition. Some of these were simple, such as plain olive oil, butter, or slices of meat, and some combined a number of different ingredients to provide either protection to the hands or to help repair them after spending the day outside. I will be sharing a very simple hand cream that you can make at home later on, but first, let's start off with a 1915 article about chapped hands and cornmeal. Everyone who does anything in the winter that exercises the hands outdoor, whether wearing gloves or not, is liable to chapping. To find the right blend for cleansing and softening the hands without making them too tender for active use in cold air has been for centuries the dream and aim of soap makers. Chapped hands are in reality soiled hands, hands where the dirt is worked in and set up irritation. Many a toilet table, by the variety of lotions it displays, proves how hard its owner has tried to find just the one most effective. Once in a while, for a while, a lotion will fit the bill, but it may be so continuously costly as to be deterrent. There is, however, a thing so simple and cheap has to be within the reach of all, cornmeal. Mix it with a little fine Castile soap and warm water. After a thorough washing, rub in a little olive oil or lanolin or Vaseline and then wipe off. With half a dozen nights of such treatment, even the chapped hands of a devoted golfer will usually heal. Should they be obstinate, rub in at night a little lime juice or lemon juice to complete the process of healing. Night is the best time because the hands then have a longer exemption from exposure to cold and so the healing process has a better opportunity to take hold. Always wipe the hands perfectly dry after washing them and press down and gently back the skin around the nail with a towel. This last will prevent the development of hangnails. After the cornmeal washing with warm water at night, a cornmeal wash with cold water in the morning is advised. Meal does by the mechanic action what soap does by chemic, and does not burrow into the flesh like most soaps. On general principles, after ordinary washing in warm water, cold should be used to harden the hands and enable them to cope with cold air. The practice of greasing the hand under the notion that it feeds it is one of dubious value, but the occasional rubbing in of olive oil, absolutely pure, is beneficial in most cases, both to the nails as well as the hands, and will do much to prevent their chapping. Okay, well, after some of those um, dubious claims, let's move on to one of my favorite books, Health and Beauty Hints from 1910, and see what it has to say. If in addition to the wearing of two pairs of gloves, a woman can rub on cold cream, her hands will become, in time, beautifully soft. 
In applying this nourishing food, it should be worked into the fingers and the backs of the hands, especially on the cuticle at the base of the nails, before the gloves are pulled on. And unless too much grease is applied, it will not soak through the leather. As a rule, by the time one comes in from walking and removes the gloves, the cream will have been absorbed. Then, the fingers must be washed and wiped with glycerin and rose water, in proportion of one-third of the former to two-thirds of the latter, having five drops of carbolic acid to each gill of the mixture. The superfluous amount on the skin may be wiped off. Okay, well, <laughs> I don't know about using carbolic acid on your hands, that sounds like a very bad idea, but... Using cold cream and letting it soak in is a great idea. Just one thing to note, you will end up with hand cream all over the inner pair of gloves. The article is sort of talking about having a cotton pair underneath a leather pair. You'll want to make sure the pair of gloves can be easily washed because the oil over time will get kind of rancid and the gloves you use for this purpose will start to smell. <laughs> I have learned that from experience. <laughs> None of these ideas seem like quite the right thing for my particular situation, so let's move on to the Victorian hand cream that I promised. This recipe is from the book Health, Beauty, and the Toilet, published in 1886. For this recipe, you will need equal parts by weight of cocoa butter, sweet almond oil, and beeswax. I measured out 25 grams of each. Gently melt the oils and wax together. A double boiler really is the best method for making hand cream, but I was feeling particularly lazy today and just popped the mixture into the microwave for 15 second intervals until it had fully melted. Then, grab a pair of electric mixers and beat until the cream has fully cooled and thickened. You can also stir with a spoon or a fork instead of the mixers, but the mixers produce a softer texture, which I find makes application easier. Package into a jar, and you're all set to protect your hands this winter. The final product is really rich. I wouldn't use this one on the face, but it should be perfect for the hands. Well, hopefully I'm now on my way to restoring my hands back to normal condition. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye! This video is made possible through the generous support of my Patreon members. Thank you. wrong hand. <laughs>